Can we just agree to not freak out over President Trump's tweets anymore, over his comments? Can we just take it down a notch and get some consistency, some level-headedness? Markets, I'm talking to you. Over the weekend, futures were like down and then up based on what Trump was saying. It was giving me a heart attack. My blood pressure was all over the place. If you missed it, Trump was saying that he was regretting having tariffs. And then the White House clarified that he was really was saying he regretted he didn't go more and go more severe with the tariffs. And then he ended up saying that they are actually talking and that China really wants to make a deal which I agree, they want to make a deal, but they also want to keep their thievery going and a whole bunch of other things. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. But man, can we just agree on the market just to be cool for a little bit and just, you know, go back to good old fundamentals? I guess that's a different era. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you so much for listening to the show, for sharing the show. For those of you who tweet about the show, share on social media. I really appreciate that so much. It just makes me all happy inside. We are part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com. Put in HTBT in the memo field. Help us tent builders be the number one show with the most memberships. I love that title. You know, not only are we helping today with what the Lord is doing with this network, but we are learning how to be more successful together so that we can support the future ventures, the future activities, the future that God wants to do in the places that we are fellowshipping with, the communities we're in, the things that we're interested in. And that is one of the most important reasons that why we need to be successful is so we can financially support these things. And right now we can do it with a simple monthly subscription to the Fight, Laugh, Feast network over to fightlaughfeast.com. Put an HTBT in the memo field. Oh man, I got a lot to get to today. But before we do, I just need you to know that you can reach out to me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. Find me on, sh- on the social media sites. I almost said show notes and that. You couldn't really find me on the show notes, but my links are in the show notes. You can find them, How to Build a Tent. Appreciate a follow, a like, a share. Before we get into the news today, I want to talk about the um, tools that Trump can use. I have a correction to make. Last week, I said that Trump cannot force businesses to not do business with China. But it turns out I am wrong, and I kind of spoke too soon. We'll talk about that in a second. There was a big ruling yesterday in the pharmaceutical world. Johnson & Johnson was ordered to pay some money over the opioid crisis. We'll talk about that in a second and my thoughts. And if we have time, we're going to be talking about taxes because we want to end on a depressing note sometimes. Before we get into that, one of the people I met at my church, my newly found church in Orlando, was a financial advisor. For those of you who've been listening for a while, I've been looking for a financial advisor that I can push you guys to that has a fiduciary responsibility and that is that is looking out for you, isn't looking to you know fleece you and earn commissions off of you, but really wants your best interest in mind. And their company is Mosin. I am going to spell it because I might be saying it wrong. MosinFitzgerald.com, M-O-I-S-A-N-D. F-I-T-Z-G-E-R-A-L-D dot com, Mosin Fitzgerald dot com. I just met Mr. Fitzgerald, and he is just a, a really nice guy, fantastic. They manage assets. If you have a million dollars in assets or more, they want to manage your money. I would highly recommend, if you have a million dollars in assets, you really need expert advice. And even if you're not there yet, but you're on your way there, they would love to hear from you too and help you get to those goals. So if you have that and that much in assets, check them out, mosinandfitzgerald.com. A great Christian guy and will be able to help you maintain that money that you built, that wealth you've accumulated from being successful. All right, now I need to fact check myself. It is true, Trump can force US firms to quit China. I was reading a Reuters article about this, and thank you, Reuters, for that. And it comes from a 1977 law called the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, or IEEPA. And one of the laws declares that the Trump can announce an emergency and block activities of individual companies or even entire economic sectors, uh, some of the former federal officials and legal experts have said. Now, 
This is big because if this trade war continues to ex escalate, I almost said exculate. Oh, oh my goodness. And D Trump enacts this and forces you to no longer do business in China. We, the American people. Well, if you are producing a manufacturing company or you rely on materials that other people are manufacturing and building in China, you need to start planning for the switching cost of going from China to another country, most likely some other, maybe Vietnam or maybe even Mexico. Maybe you, maybe there's going to be like robotics in the United States or some kind of manufacturing, but there is going to be a switching cost. There is going to be a potential increase in your um, raw materials or whatever costs, whatever production costs that you're making in China. So you need to prepare for that. It could happen. And like we've talked about before, I don't know if I have so much confidence that the Chinese are going to play by the rules. And I know that Trump's not going to let them get away with it. So that will be interesting to keep an eye on. But if you are definitely in the manufacturing arena and producing things and building things in China, beware of that law. Uh, next thing I want to talk about, and this is kind of a big one, and it's really interesting. Johnson & Johnson, there's like a ton of lawsuits right now, or I should say several there's several lawsuits going on right now about the opioid crisis. And there was this one case in Oklahoma where the Oklahoma judge found Johnson & Johnson liable for stoking the opioid crisis through their marketing. And the state was needs to be paid $572 million. Johnson & Johnson will be paying Oklahoma $572 million. Now, this is an interesting case for me. Because in there's a lot of people that are equating this to the tobacco industry and how the tobacco industry for so long marketed that cigarettes are healthy, cigarettes are cool, and they were marketing to kids and they were doing all this stuff. And if you watched like Mad Men, they, were, they would hire ad agencies to promote it and try to get people to smoke cigarettes. And it, I do not think that is like this. The opioid crisis is different on several levels. And the one main one is, to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can email me or, you know, call me out in front of everyone in the social media world. You cannot get opioids legally from Johnson & Johnson or any other opioid com company unless a doctor prescribes it. And I just wonder, what is the responsibility of the doctors in this. That is a big difference from tobacco because before it was between the tobacco industry and you as the individual. You would go to the store, buy your cigarettes, and you thought, hey, they told me it's healthy, it's healthy. And you didn't know that you could potentially increase your risks of cancer and all these other health defects that come from putting tar in your lungs. But in the case of Johnson & Johnson and the opioid companies, they had to pay $572 million because they were marketing, but the because the doctors were prescribing these medicines, these opioids to the patient. So what is the responsibility of the patient? And oh, I am not letting off the hook at all the individual where you have an obligation to. And it's just an interesting dynamic of where we are headed to in our society when the blame is getting being put on the producer. And it kind of reminds me also with gun manufacturers where the politicians are wanting the gun manufacturers to be liable for what happens with mass shootings and what happens with crimes that are committed with their weapons, even though they are not responsible for it. Now, I don't, I'm not like going to get into the deep dive of if Johnson and Johnson marketed inappropriately and unethically to take opioids said there's no problems with it. I honestly don't even know a commercial off the top of my head, but here is a second effect of what's going to happen here. If this ruling stands and Johnson Johnson is going to appeal it, if this stands, there is going to be a severe hit to the pharmaceutical industry and the amount of money they're going to be able to produce to create new drugs and how they are able to market them and let people know about them. Now, some of you might be saying, 
Yeah, that's great. They should only let people know about them through the doctor. They shouldn't be able to have any advertisements at all. Well, you know what? They are a private company that can do whatever they want with their capital. In theory, this is in a, a free country, right? But let me tell you this. If they're going to be start having to be on the hook for potential addictions to their drugs, and they are going to be the ones who solely take the responsibility for this, they're going to have to set aside a lot more money for these kinds of lawsuits. I mean, the, the prosecutors in Oklahoma were asking for $17 billion. So Johnson Johnson really got a big win. You'd be thinking $572 million is still a lot of money. But just to give you an idea of how big of a win this is for Johnson Johnson, their stock price went up when this was announced, not down. Because everyone was assuming they'd have to pay more. But could you imagine if it was $17 billion? Now, this is Johnson Johnson. They're a huge company. Everyone knows about them. But what about all the other pharmaceutical companies that are smaller? that are banking on one kind of drug to make it in and pass you know all the stuff they have to pass. Well they're going to have to have another cost now of bearing the responsibility of if that there is some kind of ad, advent no, not advent. Gosh man, I am not pulling out the good words today. If they have any negative repercussions from their drugs and they might get sued for it, this is just more liability, more insurance that they're going to have to pay, which means less money that they can put into research and development, which is the core of these drug prices. And why, if you're wondering why drug prices are so high when it costs so little to manufacture, because the cost of a drug isn't in the manufacturing. It's really cheap to manufacture drugs. The cost is in the research and development because so many drugs fail and there's so much research ends in dead ends that when a drug finally does make it and is successful, that has to cover the cost of all the other failed drugs as well. So now you have a little more insight. I'd love to hear from you. Let's go out and be successful, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.